You guys ever wonder how expensive Empire Takeover is? You see these guys running around with these huge powerhouse castles and you just gotta wonder like, how much do those guys spend? Well, the answer is probably gonna surprise you. Let's get into it. First, a disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor. Do not take anything I say in this video as financial advice. I am not an expert on video game design, marketing, or mobile games. I am most likely an idiot for continuing to play this game. With that out of the way, let's get into some stuff. First of all, the obvious point, this game is pay to win. It's a pay to win system. Players use real money to gain advantage over other players. That's the dictionary definition of pay to win. T5 or tier five troops cannot realistically be obtained for free. Yes, it's possible. I can show you some numbers that will show it takes a very long time. You have to pay money just to get tier five troops, which gives you a massive advantage. It's very possible to buy stats that make your castle so incredibly strong that you're almost unstoppable. It increases the enemy wounded, decreases your wounded to the point where you're practically invincible. And to top all that off, there's this horrible garbage troop recovery system with the holy water where it takes you months to recover from an attack and it essentially forces you to pay to get more troops at some point. This game has one of the most predatory monetary systems I've ever seen. They have sales that are false advertising bait and switch. You'll see items marked like 10,000% off when it's just the normal price. All of the upgrades you can buy are not just a single buy this, get this. It's always buy 20 of these packs to get this. It basically hides the price of what the upgrade actually costs to get. Not only that, but the prices and the quantity of items in each pack are so weirdly designed that it makes it almost impossible to tell what's a good deal or what's a bad deal. This game is insanely expensive. A full red Sir Arm set, which is armor, four different sets with different uh, troop types. A single set costs over $10,000 to max. A basic mythical hero costs three to four hundred dollars to max out. A premium mythical hero, think you know Jack or Asmodeus, eight hundred dollars to a thousand two hundred dollars to max, and there's some that are even more than that. And if you're looking to buy every single upgrade in the game, I mean you're looking at fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars depending on what you buy. It's crazy. The crazy thing is that monetary system and the prices in this game are not unique to this industry. Just look up these videos on YouTube. Someone spent $100,000 on Clash of Clans, $100,000 on Diablo Immortal, and some recommended videos on this topic in general if you really want to deep dive on it is predatory monetization of video games and monetization madness. Those guys really go into how crazy this whole industry gets. So with that said, why the heck would you play this game? First of all, the, the gameplay is pretty simplistic. It's easy to learn, difficult to master. It's also how they suck you in, but it's also what makes it fun. The grind can be enjoyable. If you're into games where there's a grind, where you start out weak and grind and grind and get stronger, it's definitely here in this game and it is pretty fun. The biggest disappointment to the whole thing, however, is the fact that you can't grind to be as strong as other people. You can only grind to a certain point. The battles in this game can be fun if you can find opportunities for close matchups. By that I mean it's not someone with a thousand percent stats versus 300 percent stats. You know, people are a little closer and stat levels, it can be pretty fun. And the last thing is the social system slash the community. It gives a good foundation for forming friendships because the game kind of forces everybody to work together. In order to work together, you have to be polite and you can't just you know be rude and trolling all the time. And so the amount of good players or friendly players compared to rude slash troll players is a good mix actually. So one thing you're gonna need to know is what roles you can perform in this game based on how much you're willing to spend. If you're going to play completely for free, you can play the tower game 
or the level runner game completely for free without spending a dime. Otherwise, if you want to engage in the war game, you can be a one troop annoyer. I will go into more detail into that later. If you want to be a free slash budget player where you're just spending a little bit of money every month, you can be a T4 player. If you're willing to put about $2,000 into the game, it'll be very easy for you to be a T5 player. Now a big jump. If you want to be a T5 killer, then you're looking at spending around $20,000. And at the upper echelon, if you wanna be a T5 rally leader, you're looking at $40,000. So let's go into each of these roles a little bit deeper. First, the free tier, which is the tower player slash one troop annoyer. Playing this way is completely free, very low time investment. I mean, literally as soon as you make a castle, you have troops and you can make more troops very easily. So you can literally be a one troop annoyer right from the get go. Your first option for playing at this tier is to just play the tower games and ignore the war content completely. This includes the level runner games as well, but essentially you're just playing the side games and you're not paying attention to fighting at all. The second option is if you want to engage in the war content, the most effective thing you can do as a free player is having your castle completely empty so when people attack you, they get nothing. And then you just drive people nuts with one trooping. To explain what one trooping is, it's essentially doing a normal attack, but instead of having an army with thousands of troops, you just have a single troop. It will look like a normal attack to other players so they have no idea you're only sending one troop. You won't be able to kill anything, but if a building is empty, you actually can burn it down. So in addition to be able to take on buildings with just a single troop, you can also just confuse and annoy other players and just add to the chaos in general. If you want to have like no time investment at all, but still want to kind of help your friends, like this is the role for you. Now the build and the stats are completely irrelevant. You don't have to learn anything about builds. You don't have to level your castle at all. You can literally do this at castle level one. However, I would recommend getting up to castle 10 so that you can engage in the chat. If you can't do the chat, it's a little hard to coordinate and talk to your friends or annoy your enemies. If you can get all the way to castle 20, you can also participate in KVK or kingdom versus kingdom. That's another consideration. All right, next we'll do the free slash budget player, which would be a T4 player. This is completely free. There is a moderate time investment. You're essentially looking at three to four weeks of grinding to get to T4 troops. And then you'll need to also spend some time improving your stats and your gear and things like that. You can spend a little bit of money here and there for fun, but none of it's really going to make a big impact. Spending money to improve your stats is a very slow, gradual process. So if you're only going to spend like $20 a month, it's going to make almost no impact to your stats. When you're in Kingdom versus Kingdom, you are primarily a flag builder because you don't need any stats to be able to do that. And then when you're not helping with flags, you are participating in the low slash mid temple battles, which are capped at Castle 25 for the low and Castle 29 for the mid. When you're not in Kingdom versus Kingdom, you essentially are just fighting other T4 players, which is most of the player base, so you got plenty of targets. Now, long-term prospects for a T4 player, you have two options. Number one is you can be that C25 or C29 rally filler. And the reason I say that you're a rally filler and not a rally leader is because in order to be a rally leader for these, it does require a significant amount of money to do so. So if you're just a free budget player, just plan on only filling the rallies and not leading them. You can fill rallies for either Castle 25 or Castle 29, depending on which level you wanna lock your castle at. And you're gonna to have to be comfortable with being locked at that castle level. Castle 29's a little more fun because you can still run Darkness 7s. Castle 26, you can only run Darkness 6. And then lastly, for the build, you might want to consider having a cavalry build. Infantry Archer is the common build that everybody does, and that's a really good build for Darkness. But if you are planning on fighting T4 players, using a cavalry build gives you an advantage because then you'll be able to counter all the infantry ar archer builds. If you do have a cavalry build, I would still recommend having an infantry archer build on the side just for darkness. 
Now let's talk about the second option, which is having a Castle 30 that's T4. It's completely possible to get C30 for free, but you're still only gonna have T4 troops. It takes around six months of grinding to get to Lord 90 for free. Unfortunately, you still have to get a bunch of diamonds to be able to get tier five troops, and the diamonds are gonna take you about a year and a half to get for free. So realistically, as a free player, you're only gonna be a T4, C30. If you're willing to spend a little bit of money, you can probably get to tier five troops in about nine to 10 months. Now as a C30, you lose the ability to join those T4 temple battles that I mentioned, and you can't really join the T5 temple battles you don't have T5 yet. Having Castle 30 gives you the level 10 research, which will make it a lot easier for you to kill the weaker T4 players. Although you still won't be able to take on the Twinks that are the rally leaders for the temple battles. I would still do a cavalry build, have a you know Dark Nest infantry archer build on the side, but then have a cavalry build for taking on other T4 players. Now my advice between choosing between these two options is just do both. You can play as a Castle 25 or Castle 29 during one Kingdom vs. Kingdom, depending on the timing of what, when the next Kingdom vs. Kingdom is and what level you happen to be at. While you're killing time waiting for Kingdom vs. Kingdoms, you can just optimize your Darkness 7 performance to help kill some time. While you're doing all that, you can slowly make your way to Lord 90, and then once you hit Lord 90, you can decide do you want to upgrade to C30 or just stay at C29. Once you do finally get to Lord 90, you might want to consider the next role we talked about earlier, which is the T5 player. So to be a T5 player, you're going to need a lot of diamonds for Warhol slash prison level 30. If all you buy are monthly passes that help give you diamonds, if you only do the monthly passes, you're looking at about nine months to get the diamonds that you need. If you only do daily free diamonds, you're looking at a year and a half. If you just buy the diamonds that you need, which is around $2,000 worth of diamonds, you'll be able to unlock T5 troops in a more realistic time frame like around four months or so. Now you do need to keep in mind that as just a basic T5 player, you're looking at around three to 400% stats. You're not gonna be a 500% stat player. I would still recommend having a darkness build and then a PVP build. They can both be infantry archer, or you can have one as cavalry, but the main thing is to have different gear sets and different hero combinations to maximize your stats. Best build for darkness is infantry archer. The best build for PVP actually changes a lot. And as of right now, the typical choice is going to be Infantry Archer as well. Every build has a role in PvP, but it's better to just focus on one if you're a budget player. Now, what do you get to do in battles? The main role will be burning T4 players. Even a high stat T4 player just can't touch you at all. You'll also be a rally filler. You're helping reinforce the guys who spent a lot of money on their castles. And the last thing that you can really help out with during Kingdom vs. Kingdom specifically is grinding Dark Nest 8 and Dark Nest 9. You get tons of honor for doing these Dark Nests. And unlike a Dark Nest 7, which can only do eight players, a Dark Nest 8 or 9 can have up to 100 players, so you can really rack up the honor. Last thing I'll mention about the T5 player is if you want to only spend 2,000 to be able to get tier five troops and you're wondering what the optimal upgrades are for that $2,000, I, I, I thought of a couple for you to think about. First, I would get four Sir Aram Archer set pieces, and I would level them all the way up to the purple level. There's a total of six items you can get in each set, but the helm and the chest are the least helpful and have good free gear replacements available. If you just get the four purple pieces, you're looking at about $500. Next, I would max Barbian, who is the free mythical infantry hero. He has really good stats that'll help you out for darkness, and he's also useful for PvP. Maxing him out will run you about $385. Next, I would max Severus. He's what's called a starter hero where he's a buy only hero, but he's another mythical infantry hero. He's not as good for PVP as Barbian is, but he's very good for darkness and he's a little bit more affordable as well. Affordable, I should say. 
And the last upgrade I would recommend is the most expensive one, but it's maxing Asmodeus, who is a premium infantry hero, and he will really help you with darkness and PvP. However, he's also the most expensive upgrade in this list at $875. Crazy that that is what one hero costs, but it is what it is. Altogether, those upgrades will run you just a little over $2,000, which will get you the diamonds you need, and then also help, help give you some really good stats for the roles that we listed out a little bit earlier. Okay, now here's where it jumps significantly in cost, all the way up to $20,000 to become a T5 killer. I mean, just think about all the things you can do for $20,000. Let's continue. If you are so inclined as to spend $20,000 on your castle, it'll get you to around 800 to 1,000%-ish stats, depending on what you buy. If you have anything less than 800% stats, you're gonna have a tough time whenever you're fighting against other T5 castles. Even if you are winning the fights, you're gonna be losing a lot of your troops, which is gonna add up big time. If you have 800% or so, you'll be able to dominate most flag battles. Now, there are gonna be players out there with more than 800%, and even if you had 1,000, there's gonna be players out there with more than 1,000. However, 800% is gonna be most than most people can afford in this game. It's a good first start if you're looking to get into this tier. If you happen to be in a low competition scenario, and I mean like low competition, you could also lead rallies if your rally leaders aren't available. Which leads us into the best of the best, which is the T5 rally leader who's looking at spending roughly $40,000 on a video game. Essentially what you're buying is maximizing your stats so that you can lead the rallies in Kingdom vs. Kingdom. You'll have to plan on buying new upgrades anytime they come out, because if you aren't buying every single thing that comes out, you eventually are going to fall behind and you are going to be disappointed that you have so much invested in this game and yet you are still losing. You're also going to have to plan to spend a lot of money on recovering your troops so that you can keep running rallies. As of the time of recording this video, which is winter in 2023, you're going to need at least 1,300% stats for your main attack, 800% on a secondary troop type attack, and 1,200 legion attack and HP attack just to be competitive. So with all that said, what is my advice? My advice is stick to a budget. You gotta figure out what you're comfortable spending every month, and then based on what that monthly spend is, you have to figure out how many months it's gonna take you to get to the role that you wanna play. And once you figure that, you have to ask yourself, are you comfortable with that role? If so, proceed. If not, you either gotta up that budget or just quit and play something else. And whether you decide to proceed or not, I highly recommend that you think of what else you might rather use the money for. Even if you can afford a couple hundred dollars a month, ask yourself, do I want to spend a couple hundred dollars a month on this? Or take my kid and go go to Disneyland. I mean, there's like, there's so many things you could do instead of giving this game your money. Like, I, it just makes me sick what people spend on this, including myself, even though I'm not anywhere near either the T5 killers or the T5 rally leaders. But I just, it just seems like such a waste of money to me. But at the same time, I'm still playing this game and I'm still giving them a little bit of money. So who am I to judge? All right, guys, hope that was helpful. I hope that you guys are not driven to quit this game. I hope maybe you're motivated to challenge yourself to play for free or on a budget and just see what damage you can do. If you like this video, give me a like, leave a comment, let me know what kind of content you're interested in, and I hope to see you in game. See you later.